to welcome to the set Miss Cassie Cook, who is the treasurer of the San Francisco branch of the NAACP. She is also the event manager and the event co-chair. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So you've been a busy lady. I've been a very busy lady, and we have been very successful this year. We have like, we sold out. Awesome. We have Eight, over, how, how many? Over a thousand people. Awesome. Over and a thousand this, people. Yes, yes. This is the plateau since I've been uh, working the events. Absolutely. And That's I've been great. doing this for about 11 years now. Awesome. That's awesome. So, could you tell me, how long has it does it take you to plan an event of this magnitude? So, when did you guys start planning this event? I started, I started in August. Mm -hmm. Up until last night. Up until <laughs> <laughs> so you started uh, August up until last night. So this is your 96th anniversary. This is the 96th anniversary. Yes. That is amazing. So you guys have been, have you been doing this event for 96 years? Or no. The San Francisco branch has is been in existence for 96 years. No, they have been the they have been doing the Freedom Fund Gala for 96 years. Okay, so you have. You've been doing this event for, that is amazing. I have not. Well, okay, of course. I, I, I have of only course. been doing this <laughs> event for 11 years. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yes, yeah, like you like. Let me clear that up. <laughs> she has not been doing this event for 96 years, but it has been in existence for 96 years, which is amazing. You're exactly so, correct. Awesome. So for an event like this, a, a thousand people. What few? What do you feel? Few the ticket sales or the momentum? Do you think it's the political climate? or perhaps you guys have some amazing guest speakers that are gonna be here tonight, or is it a combination? It's a combination. It's the political climate. Uh, it's women working together with women. Mm -hmm. And it's by association. Awesome. And, uh, and our sponsors as well. Our sponsors, it's the reason that we are able to do this. Awesome, thank you. Well, thank you so much for doing this event. And if you could just tell the viewers, because the proceeds from this event obviously is money that goes back into your programming, right? Yes. So if you could just share what some of that is. Okay. In NAACP branches of 501C4s, which we cannot, we are not like a C3, Nonprofit C4s, you have to raise your own monies. And when we have this event, this event allows us to operate for the next year. This is the only funding that we get from this event to operate for a whole year. Awesome. That's awesome. So thank you so much. I know it's going to be a fabulous event. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Thank you. I'm excited. Thank you. Have a great evening. I have the pleasure of sitting down with Congresswoman Maxine Waters, and I'm excited to welcome you to the set of Real Talk with Terry. Con yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. Congressman Waters, there's an unprecedented number of women headed to Congress in January, and you have a long history of public service, and could you just share with the viewers what motivated you to dedicate so much of your career to public service? Oh my goodness. Um, I have been involved since high school, awesome. uh, one way or the other, in public service and working in the community. Um, I always had active roles all of my life, and I was involved very much with the war on poverty mm -hmm. uh, that helped to bring resources into our communities that had been absent, such as Head Start and other kinds of programs. And of course, I think uh, there was a defining moment uh, when I was basically drafted uh, to run for office at the height of the women's movement mm -hmm. many years ago. <laughs> and since that time, I've served in the California State Assembly and, of course, in Congress, and um, that has been my life. Awesome. Thank you. And you have a proven track record of success, particularly following the civil unrest in L.A. in 1992, and as a result, you founded Community Build. What sort of projects are you currently working on? Well, as you know, uh, since we have taken back the House in the midterm Yay. elections, I have the great possibility of being the chair yes. of the Financial Services Committee. Awesome. And that committee has a responsibility uh, for all of the banks, mm -hmm. all of Wall Street, the awesome. insurance companies, and of course we have HUD, uh, the International Monetary Fund, 
on and on and on. So we have a lot of issues to deal with. I'm going to focus on homelessness. Awesome. Uh, we have a, a crisis in this country. Absolutely. And we need affordable housing. I'm going to focus on consumer protection. We have the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau uh, that we created under the Dodd-Frank reforms. And of course, this administration have been undermining all of that work. And I'm going to work to restore that. Uh, I'm going to work on making sure that we have a national flood insurance program awesome. uh, that is affordable awesome. and that we don't have the high premiums that people can't afford. I'm going to be working on uh, with my other colleagues on infrastructure, even though it's not directly in that committee. I think we all have to weigh in on what we can do uh, to deal with our water system uh, in this country, our bridges, roads, highways, and our streets. So we have a lot of work yes, to do. Yes, we have a lot yes. of work. Yes. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. And my last question, I read somewhere that a wild card or an X factor in politics right now are the millennials. Yes. And that um, not just, although the millennials prefer the Democratic Party over the Republican yes. Party, that we're losing, the Democratic Party is losing millennials. What can the Democratic Party do to change this phenomenon? Well, I don't know that we're absolutely losing millennials, but I do know that many millennials have thought that both parties were the same, mm -hmm. that it didn't make any difference who you voted for. I think since they've seen Donald Trump, uh, that they see that there is a difference, because none of us have ever seen anything like him before. Uh, and I think that uh, they're beginning uh, not only to vote for Democrats, but they're looking for authenticity. And they're looking for individuals who will speak truth to power. Absolutely. And who will absolutely deal with those issues that are on their hearts and their minds. And I think they're moving in our direction. And I think when we analyze what has happened in the midterms, we're going to see that. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so You're much welcome. for sitting down with us. You're welcome. I'm, I'm excited about January. You. And good luck. Thank you. We are rooting for you. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I have the pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Kenneth Montero, one of the honorees for tonight's program. And Dr. Montero, I want you to discuss more, and I'm going to read this because I don't want to mess it up, but I want you to talk to the viewers and just share with me more about the false education that opens people up to discredit humanity. And first of all, before you discuss that, I just want the viewers to know that you are a 37-year career faculty member Member yes. in higher education and if you could just give us a little bit more tell us a little bit more about your background and what you've done that would be awesome I've been teaching for 37 years in public higher education most of it at San Francisco State University so awesome. I'm really committed to highly accessible affordable relevant education meaning learning big ideas being able to do something important in your community when you leave your education, awesome. so that's uh, that's part of it. But the uh, the point that you we were, we were talking about earlier, yes. before we came on the screen, is that ignorance is one of the big manipulative tools of powerful people who want to create pain for other people. Mm. Self knowledge and other knowledge are what our knowledge hinges on. So if you can convince me I'm not who I really am, Absolutely. I become insecure, you can keep me terrified. Wow. If I, if you can also convince me that you're not who you are, a wonderful human being, then someone convinced me to hurt you. But as neighbors, if, I, if we know ourselves, we will hold ourselves differently. And if we know each other, there's no way you're going to get me to hate you. Now, I might get a little irritated of what's happening at the fence or what have you, Absolutely. but I won't hate you because I know your humanity, I know your history, I know your people's history, and you know, and, and if someone tries to call you outside of your name or, or, or imply that you're something else, you can stop them immediately and say, 